We begin with a seven-year NASA-led mission set to finally come to an end this morning. NASA's space capsule carrying asteroid samples is making its way down to Earth with an expected landing later this hour. The OSIRIS-REx spacecraft returned into Earth's orbit this morning and released a capsule carrying almost nine ounces of space rocks believed to be four and a half billion years old. The spacecraft was launched seven years ago. Its mission was to collect these rocks from Bannu. Now joining us now is Dan Riskin, our CTV science and technology expert. Dan, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Pleasure. Thanks for talking to me. It's a, a, an exciting day uh, for people in so many different fields uh, as we get ready for this return. What's, what's the big thing for you about this? Uh, well, you know what? There's so much here. There, there is so much. Uh, sometimes the missions that have humans on them get a lot more attention. You know, people go up to the International Space Station, spend a long time. But this is a mission to an asteroid. And this is where engineering, like you couldn't have a more difficult mission. Uh, it is hard to program a robot to drive across the room, turn around and drive back. But to send a robot out into space to arrive at an asteroid, and they haven't got a close look at it until they get there. And then when they get there, they find out the asteroid is not at all what they were expecting. And they have to redesign the mission in some way in order to collect a sample from it. And then it's supposed to fly back and it's supposed to throw this sample back you know, onto the Earth and hit a target. And the, the date and time of the sample hitting the ground has been set since before the thing took off in 2016. So this date of September 24, 2023 has been in the calendars of NASA scientists and Canadian Space Agency scientists for a very long time. And this is a, a really exciting moment. We're going to get this sample of a, another world, an asteroid. We're going to be able to hold it. In, well, you don't want to hold it in your hands because you'll get stuff all over it, but we'd be able to hold it in our hands, which is really just an amazing feat. Which actually, it did happen uh, to a previous one. Was it not contaminated? It broke open on landing, right? Yeah, there have been all kinds of failures in the past, and Japan has done missions as well. And the big thing that went funny here is that they had a plan that was built around getting to an asteroid that was very solid. And they thought, okay, we're going to get to this solid asteroid. We're going to have a very hard thing that hits the surface, sprays some nitrogen gas to kick up some dust, and then collects that dust into a little container, and that'll be good. But when they got there, the asteroid wasn't hard. It was soft. It was a loose conglomeration of rocks and boulders. And so first of all, there was nowhere safe to touch. And then second of all, once you hit it, you just went right into it like you were falling into the ball pit at Ikea. So they had a real <laughs> uh, you know, trick ahead of them to get that sample. And it did not go the way that they had originally sketched it out on paper way back before the launch. But nonetheless, they managed to collect a sample. And they don't even know how big their sample is right now. They have a ballpark guess. But if it's within the, the realm of what they're guessing, it'll be the biggest sample they've ever brought back from an asteroid. And let, let's talk about that sample. Let's assume, assume it lands in Utah, which I'm still fascinated by the math involved, something that was released, what, 60, mm -hmm. 100,000 kilometers away from us. And it's just been free falling since then, essentially. But when it lands, what are they going to do with this material? It's being divvied up. What will they be looking for with it? So it needs to be delivered in a very special way. One of the things about an asteroid that makes it different from all the rocks here on Earth is that the ones here on Earth have been weathering. They've been exposed to oxygen. They've been exposed to water. They've been rolling over with plate tectonics. That asteroid's been sitting still since we got started. So it is a time capsule of the distant past made of the same stuff that our planet's made out of. And so you really get a chance to see what our origins are when you get a sample like that. But then the catch is, as soon as you open the container, all the oxygen comes rushing in, all the humidity of the air, and it wrecks it. And all those asteroids that come and get delivered to us as falling, as shooting stars, they all get wrecked in the same way. There's lots that's good there, but they're not pristine. So they've got to keep this thing pristine. So not only do they have to bring this thing back and land it in the Utah desert and go pick it up, but it's got to stay in a sealed container that keeps it in a vacuum so that the only difference is that it's now experiencing gravity. They don't even want to get a magnetic field near these things because they want to know everything about them. And so once they've got them, they need to keep them, uh, it, they need to move them into a facility where they can take them out of that container without it spoiling them. Uh, and then they will get divvied up. And the Canadian Space Agency built one of the important uh, instruments on the spacecraft that collected these samples. We built the uh, a laser altimeter. Basically, it's uh, a laser that can see exactly how far the spacecraft is from the surface. And using that, they were able to map the entire asteroid so they could pick where they were going to take their sample. Because the Canadian Space Agency played such a pivotal role, Canada gets to keep some of the rocks. And so some of those rocks are headed for Canada. 
Uh, rumor has it that they'll live at the Royal Ontario Museum, uh, but that hasn't been officially announced to my knowledge. Um, but but those rocks are the, will be belong to Canada. And so that's one of the exciting things is that Canadian scientists, Canadian students are going to be able to write their PhD thesis on on these these samples that are just coming back to Earth in less than an hour. Uh, a couple of I know we, we're supposed to be wrapping up, but I'm just ner- I'm going all nerdy on this because yeah, it. It, it really is so awesome. <laughs> Uh, any concerns about what might be coming back? It's been sitting static. And could this have been from Earth originally? Is there any chance that this could have been originally from Earth? Yeah, so it's it's interesting to think about. They know the trajectory of this um, this asteroid pretty well. And so they have a sense of where it's from in the solar system. And so the real there is, of course, always the danger of contamination. But um, that's a nice, uh, nice image there of just exactly how that sample was collected. The, the, the one piece that I want people to know about this is that if you like the music of Queen, including the song Another One Bites the Dust, which is a perfect song for this mission where it's biting the dust of an asteroid. The lead guitarist of Queen, since leaving the band, has become a PhD astrophysicist, and he helped the scientists come up with a way to 3D visualize the surface of the asteroid so they could pick their sample site. So in part, the reason we're getting this is because of the lead guitarist, Brian May, from the band Queen. Mm -hmm. And I think just the fact that that is a piece of this really points to the importance of the arts and sciences and how it's all just a matter of creativity. And uh, a great excuse, if you're not still listening to uh, the talking heads from your last guest, (laughs) you can listen to some Queen as well today as an homage, uh, especially Another One Bites the Dust, because Brian May has a hand in all of this. And he actually, sorry, this is completely off topic, but he actually has a, he has books out with the stereo yep. stereo vision, I have one of them. My sister gave it to me as a oh, birthday gift. You are a nerd. I love it. Great. Good. <laughs> Dan, thank you very much for joining us. I know you'll be watching closely for the next hour oh, and absolutely. beyond, but we appreciate you uh, taking the time and talking to us today. Cheers. Thanks a lot.